I'm sure we can all agree that few things are more satisfying to watch online than surveillance footage of a would-be crime victim stopping multiple armed attackers who are bent on taking her life. And that goes doubly true when the would-be victim is a single petite woman against not one, not two, but three armed invaders who attack her home at the exact same time. Hey guys, Aaron Dore here with an update for our members. That's exactly what we have here with this video from Gwinnett County, Georgia, where a, a restaurant owner was in her home late at night, sound asleep. She has some merchandise for her restaurant stored here in her living room. She has a coworker in a separate bedroom in the home as well. Again, middle of the night and three guys, three thugs, three pieces of trash break into her home all armed, looking to rob her at least. We know the robbery was a motive. It may have been rape as well. It may have been murder as well. For sure, one of the motives was robbery. And they thought they were going to have a tiny, scared, helpless woman in the home. Instead, they got uh, a far different reaction. Let's watch. And as always, guys, we're going to break this down, discuss what we think she did right, what she could have done better. And we want to hear from you, though, most of all. Give us your feedback in the comments section. What do you think she did right? What do you think she did wrong? What would you do if this happened to you in the middle of the night? Let's hit play. Right off the bat, you've got guys breaking into the house. This guy clearly has a gun. The bottom left, you can see that right there. This guy has a gun. You can see that right there. It's dark right now. You're seeing a nighttime surveillance shot in this uh, internal security system. It's not. There's no lights on in the house. They're running around hunting for their victim. They need to find her because she's the one who has the money. They can't find her. They're now turning on lights. They're obviously not trying to hide their presence. They are convinced that she's a helpless woman who cannot stop them whenever they find her. I'm going to fast forward a little bit because they go on for about another 45 seconds trying to find her. But as you can see now, in the middle of the screen, she emerges from her bedroom, and we'll see it happen right here. Immediately, shots are being fired. She's still engaging, still engaging, still engaging. This guy flees out the back door, breaks the glass, leaves the scene. Other two guys race away down the stairs, and she will shortly emerge back on screen, uh, obviously not harmed. Now, the outcome of this was very simple. The woman survived without a scratch. She killed one of her would-be attackers or one of her actual attackers. He died on scene. Uh, two other guys got away. 18 months later, one of them was arrested for this crime. The third suspect, as far as we can determine, remains at large yet today. So high, high marks to this woman for surviving an attack from three armed invaders at the exact same time with no heads up. Let's watch it again now, and we're going to watch this, uh, the actual engagement in slow motion to learn some of the, uh, the details of this situation. Here we go. So she's in her bedroom in the back middle doorway there. They hear her. She confronts them, and we timed this, and within one and a half seconds from the door opening and her appearing, one and a half seconds later, she's already engaging these suspects. She's already engaging these guys with gunfire. And again, we're on slow motion. She's firing. She continues to fire. She chases them down the out of the doorway here and engages. So again, she gets high marks right off the bat from us for being armed because so many people are simply not armed. And if this happens to them, they have no way to fight back. She gets high marks for being armed. She also gets high marks from us for having the presence of mind to engage quickly. If she had stood there for a couple more seconds, she would have been shot down. The guy was already raising his gun. In fact, he may have been up on target. It was kind of hard to see. It's a nighttime shot here. He was already up potentially on target. Had she waited, had she not had the mental preparation done to defend herself, she would have been shot down uh, by, by these guys. And finally, she gets high marks from us as well for having the presence of mind to call 911. As you saw moments ago, when she came back up the stairs, she already had the phone in her hand. And when you're involved in a situation like this, in a home invasion, it's pretty obvious who the victim is, who the bad guys are. But if you're in public, if you're out in the street and you're attacked by an armed robber or a, a, a group of thugs, 
the first person who calls 911 very often wins because the first person establishes that they were the victim of a crime. And you don't want the other party to make the first call. You want to make that first call. So we give her props for being armed, for being mentally prepared, and for calling the police. That being said, there's some ways she could improve upon this, and we're going to break those down here now. The, the goal here, as always, is not to cast any shade towards her. She did a great job. But as you and I prepare mentally for what we would do if this ever happens to us, we want to learn from things she could have done better. The first one of those is her rushing out of her bedroom. You can see here, she is fully racing out of her bedroom to engage these guys. She's got a person right here in front of her. Let me play it again. She's got a bad guy right in front of her. We're going to pause here just for a moment. She has that guy there. She has the guy in the black jacket off to the side. She's chasing after two known hostiles right there. As she's doing that, guy number three comes out of the side of the room. She's now got three guys in the house with her, and she's still running as fast as she can uh, at the attackers. That is something you do not want to do. You have no idea at this point if there's three bad guys in your home or 30 bad guys in your home. The one thing you know you think is that your bedroom is safe. Your bedroom is secure. And so obviously if you have children in the home or dependents and you have to go and rescue them, that's a different situation. But she didn't have that uh, to worry about. And so rushing out of the safety of her bedroom uh, was definitely something you do not want to do. Definitely hold your ground where you are and defend yourself. She now goes down the stairs, still engaging these guys as bad guy number three breaks out the glass door here and flees the scene. I'm going to slide this up now back to full speed because we're going still at quarter speed. we back to full speed here for a moment. And now you see her come back up the stairs in about six seconds from now with her cell phone in her hand. I want you to notice, though, her left hand because you're going to see, excuse me, her right hand. She has her handgun right there. You hit pause right there. As you can see here, it's a little bit grainy, but her gun right now is at slide lock. She is out of ammo. She's at slide lock, and she clearly did not have any other ammo that she could use in this situation. And again, we're not criticizing her. She did a great job, three on one. She ended up killing one of the, uh, one of the bad guys, chased the other two away, saved her life, high marks. But you want to make sure you have adequate ammo to deal with these situations because this is by no means – a secure situation. These three guys, as far as she knows, are right outside her home. They could rush back into her home at any time, and she right now has no means to defend herself. So as you make your own plans for your own uh, home defense, make sure you have more ammo immediately available to you. I want to point out the other thing, though. The bad guy just ran through that door about five to six seconds ago. She now runs into the kitchen, turns on the light, and that guy, as far as she knows, that thug could be right around the corner. All he has to do is slice the pie. He can put rounds right into her, rounds on target, and she has no means of fighting back. So again, by, by not keeping in your safe area, which in this case would be her bedroom, it's the one spot she knows there was no bad guys. She is wide open here to an attack from any one of these guys who could come back in there and re-engage. Let's keep hitting play. She wanders around. Now, this guy from the right, this is her co-worker. He comes around from the right. This guy, <laughs> what can I say? He was sleeping very sound. Comes out casually, must have heard some noise, you know, and he's like, hey, what's going on? She kind of muzzles him for a moment, but it is what it is. He then goes to grab the gun. Now, you know, that might be the best thing to do. At this point, she's probably shaking out of control. It's a natural reaction. She's at slide lock. He probably wanted to make sure that she did not drop the gun or whatever the, the case may be. But if it was me, if it was me, if it was my firearm, if it was my home, I'm not going to be disarmed at that point because I still do not know if there are more threats around. So hang on to your firearm, reload it, and be prepared to re-engage. You watch this guy now. They're talking. He reaches out, and he actually grabs the handgun from her right about here. He turns around. He has the gun in his hand, and he goes back to the bedroom. Now, the first time I saw it, I thought, hey, maybe this guy know, knows where more magazines are. Maybe he's going to reload. That's, in fact, not what he does. 
He puts the gun in the bedroom. I'm going to fast forward about 15 seconds, and you're going to see him walk out here in a moment, and his hands are empty. So he goes back in the bedroom. He puts the firearm somewhere in the bedroom. He comes back with empty hands. You can see it right here. And that's pretty much the last thing we see from him. She wanders around for a bit longer, waiting for the police to arrive. And so, again, want to give her high points. She stopped three armed home invaders on her own with one magazine. We give her high points for presence of mind, high points for being armed, high points for her overall presentation. But certainly rushing into danger like that is an area where she could and we all could improve. Certainly not having more ammo available is an area where she could and we all should definitely improve. And certainly once the situation has calmed down momentarily, you know, she assumes they're gone, but she doesn't know that. And so maintain your fighting position until you know the scene is secure. And that probably, in this case, would not have been until the police arrive and they search the entire property and they search the home. That's what she should have done, gone back into her bedroom, reloaded her handgun, and waited for the police to arrive. Now, when the police arrive, there's a way to deal with that as well. When the cops come on the scene, they have no idea who the good guys are, who the bad guys are. The last thing you want to do as an armed homeowner is to meet the police at your front door with your gun in your hand. That is an excellent way to be shot. Uh, the cops, again, have no idea who's who. So if that was me, when I'm in my bedroom, I've reloaded, I'm behind whatever cover I have in my bedroom. When the police arrive and dispatch tells me they're in the home, they're up the stairs, at that point, I'm putting my gun away. It's going to be nearby, but it's not going to be in my hand because I don't want a mistake uh, being shot by the police um, as, a, as a criminal. So guys, that's our take on this video. I want to know what you guys think as always. Give us your comments. What did she do right? Again, what did she do wrong? Do you agree with our analysis? Give us your feedback. Subscribe for more information. And guys, as always, join the fight for freedom in your state capitol and in Congress. Join today at joinafa.org.